Hey guys, Matt here once again, and today I have an update, or rather follow-up, to the recent GeForce GDX 1080 and GDX 1070 videos. About three weeks ago now, we got our first look at the 1080's performance, and well, it was pretty mighty. In fact, the 1080 was so impressive that Nvidia has seemingly gotten away with asking an unbelievable $100 premium for the reference card, and has it pretty well sold out everywhere. Given the popularity of the $700 part, I expect the $450 Founders Edition of the GTX 1070 to also sell like hotcakes. Of course, we had our first look at the GTX 1070 performance last week, and again, it was very impressive stuff. As it stands, in terms of price versus performance, there's nothing that can touch the 1070. It is that good. That said, AMD's recent announcement of a $200 RX 480 might change that later this month, so be sure to stay tuned as I'll be amongst the first to bring you those results, and I'm expecting good things. Getting back to the 1070, some of you noticed that the first batch of benchmark results weren't consistent across the web. Although in my opinion the GDX 1070 looked great in our video, as well as testing done by others, some showed it to be even more impressive. At first, I put this down to the fact that we benchmarked after a 20 minute warm up period which sees the boost clock reduced by a reasonable margin. However, now having had much more time to mess around with the GDX 1070, it appears most of the lost performance was a result of the early beta driver I used. In some games, the 1070 performed as it should, while in others, it was quite a bit slower, around 10% slower at times. Anyway, I held off making any updates with a newer beta driver and went straight to the official WHQL driver. The driver in question is the new GeForce Game Ready 368.39 WHQL driver which should now be publicly available. With official certified drivers for both the GTX 1080 and 1070, all games previously tested have been retested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Now, for this video, I'm taking a slightly different approach, and depending on how well received it is by you guys, will determine how I create these massive benchmark videos going forward. Whereas the GTX 1070 video, for example, features 11 and a half minutes of graphs covering two resolutions across 22 games, this video will be much shorter. Don't panic, I've still benchmarked over 20 games at three popular resolutions, and all the graphs can be found at the Hardware Unbox website, which will be linked in the video description below. The difference being that this time I'll discuss the individual results for just 5 games at a single resolution, which should reduce the benchmark discussion to a few minutes. After which I'm going to heavily analyse the data from all 20 plus games across the multiple resolutions and look at how the various GPUs stacked up. Most of you seem to really enjoy the data breakdown towards the end of the 1080 and 1070 videos, so this is what I'll be focusing on this time. Before I jump into the benchmarks, here are a few quick notes. All tests were conducted using my GPU test rig, which is built inside the Corsair Carbide 600C with an Intel Core i7-6700K clocked and locked at 4.5GHz. For a full list of the system specs, please check the video description. You'll also find a detailed video index there as well. Finally, this time the GTX 1070 and 1080 benchmarks were conducted after a 10 minute warm up period, as this is sufficient time to get these cards up to their maximum working temperature. As always, I'm using reference AMD and Nvidia graphics cards unless specified. Picking which 5 games to look at wasn't easy though, ultimately it doesn't really matter as the conclusion will be based on the 20 plus games, the graphs of which can be found in the written review. That said, let's take a look at the results from The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, here we find the 1080 averaging 74 FPS, while the 1070 averaged 60 FPS, making it just 19% slower. The 1080 might have been 24% slower than a pair of 980 Ti graphics cards, but it was 19% faster than the Titan X and 21% faster than a single 980 Ti. Meanwhile, the 1070 was just 3% slower than the Titan X and 2% slower than the 980 Ti, despite smashing the 970 by an incredible 76% margin. Rise of the Tomb Raider presented little challenge for the 1080. Here we see an average of 110 FPS, making it 33% faster than the 1070. That said, the 1070 was still 5% faster than the Titan X and 11% faster than the GTX 980 Ti. It also crushed the Fury X by a 28% margin and the R9 390 by a 57% margin. Star Wars Battlefront is another game that provided little challenge to the 1080 at 1440p as we found an average of 98 FPS. The 1070 was also very impressive with 77 FPS placing it between the Titan X and the 980 Ti. This meant the 1070 was 4% faster than the Fury X, 31% faster than the R9 390 and 48% faster than the GTX 970. Yet again we find the 1080 delivering well over 100 FPS at 1440p, this time 125 FPS in Doom using the maximum in-game quality settings. The 1070 was also very powerful, averaging 96 FPS, making it 2% faster than the Titan X, 7% faster than the 980 Ti, and 20% faster than the Fury X. 
One of the more demanding titles we test with is Tom Clancy's The Division, and here the 1080 does drop down to an average of 76 FPS, which is of course still extremely smooth as the frame rate never dropped below 60 FPS. The 1070 was able to average 61 FPS, though at times does dip to 48 FPS, although this isn't the kind of game where that's going to be an issue. The Division played very well here. The 1080 was 25% faster than the Titan X, while the 1070 matched the Titan X, making it slightly faster than the Fury X and 980 Ti graphics cards. This is where Nvidia's new 16 nanometer FinFET GPUs really shine. Efficiency. Despite significantly outperforming the Titan X, the 1080 consumed considerably less power. The same is true for the 1070, which provided Titan X performance at a fraction of the power cost. Okay, so this time around, rather than go through all 20 plus games individually, let's take a look at the results averaged out across a number of GPU comparisons. This took a serious amount of time to put together, so I hope you guys enjoy the results. Let's get to it, shall we? First, let's take a look at the GeForce GDX 1070 data. When testing at 1080p, the 1070 was an average just 17% slower than the 1080, though keep in mind the faster 1080 is likely running into CPU bottlenecks in some of these titles, even with a 6700K clocked at 4.5GHz. The 1070 does lag a little further behind the 1080 at 1440p, as the more powerful graphics card is able to stretch its legs a little more at this higher resolution. Still, to be just 20% slower is an impressive result for the considerably more affordable graphics card. Compared to the Titan X, the 1070 was an average 4% faster at 1080p, losing out only in Star Wars Battlefront, Armor, Anno, and The Witcher. The 1070 enjoyed strong wins in Hitman, Ashes of the Singularity, and Call of Duty Black Ops 3. The 1070 is now just 3% faster on average when compared to the Titan X of 1440p. That said, not a great deal has changed here over the 1080p results. Up against the 980 Ti, the 1070 was an average 7% faster at 1080p. The only game where the 1070 lagged behind was The Witcher 3 by a slim 4% margin. Other than that, the 1070 was able to put the 980 Ti in its rearview mirrors. The 1070 is now 8% faster on average when compared to the 980 Ti at 1440p. Again, this is similar to the 1080p result and a good showing for the 1070. Now for the comparison I'm sure all of you GTX 970 owners are interested in. At 1080p, the 1070 was on average 50% faster than the 970. At times, it was up to 61% faster in games such as Far Cry Primal and Hitman. Armor 3 was the only game where we didn't see 30% plus gains, and this is likely down to a CPU bottleneck at 1080p. The 1070 managed to extend its lead over the 970 at 1440p out to a 55% margin. With the CPU bottleneck removed, the 1070 is now a great deal faster in Armor 3. Like GTX 970 owners, those rocking an R9 390 stand to gain a significant boost in performance when upgrading to the 1070. On average, we saw a 51% boost. Unsurprisingly, the only games to see minimal gains were Ashes of the Singularity and Hitman, both AMD-sponsored DirectX 12 titles that make good use of async compute. The 1070 was on average 46% faster than the R9 390 at 1440p. One of the main reasons the 390 was able to slightly recover at this higher resolution is down to the AMD driver overhead issue that plagues the Radeon graphics cards and DirectX 11 titles at lower resolutions. Comparing the 1070 to the Fury X at 1080p, we find that Nvidia's new mid-range graphics card was on average 16% faster. Again, the only weaknesses here are seen when testing with Ashes of the Singularity and Hitman. Moving to 1440p, the 1070 is now 11% faster than the Fury X, and again, it's really just those two DirectX 12 titles that are its undoing. This graph highlights what's so great and horrible about multi-GPU at the same time. When working well, we see that the 980 Ti SLI graphics cards have no trouble besting the 1080. However, when SLI scales poorly or is broken entirely, the performance is less than desirable. Given SLI only worked well in a few of the 20 plus games tested, the 1080 was able to come out on top of that battle. Surprisingly, the 1080 is able to pull slightly further ahead of the 980 Ti SLI cards at 4K, extending the margin to 7% on average. When compared to a single 980 Ti, the 1080 was considerably faster, providing 35% more performance on average. The 1080 was again dominant over the 980 Ti at 4K, this time winning by a 33% margin on average. When compared to the standard 980, the 1080 was on average 69% faster at 1440p, which is obviously a considerable margin and great news for current 980 owners looking to upgrade. The 1080 is able to extend its lead over the 980 at 4K, as it's now 72% faster on average. The 1080 made short work of the Fury X at 1440p, as it provided 39% more performance. Now at 4K, the margin between the 1080 and Fury X is reduced slightly, as the 1080 is now 33% faster on average. Well there you have it, a complete breakdown of the GeForce GDX 1080 and 1070 using the release date WHQL drivers. 
For now, it looks like Nvidia has the $400 plus GPU market all sewn up, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of damage AMD can do in the lower price tiers later this month. As mentioned earlier, for those interested, I've uploaded all the graphs to our website at hardwareunbox.com. Here you'll find the individual results for each game across three resolutions tested. Please let me know if you prefer this style, where I spend more time making comparisons, or do you prefer me to include all the individual game data? I'm your host Matt as always, and remember to hit subscribe to get release day coverage of all the upcoming graphics cards. <coughs> RX 480. <coughs>